from MTN, the Montana Television Network. This is Face the State. Welcome to this week's edition of Face the State. I'm Tim McGonigal. Today, we come to you on location from the C.M. Russell Museum in Great Falls. For years, this facility has celebrated the works of the world's most renowned Western artist, Charlie Russell. But it's more than just an art gallery. Over the next half hour, we'll learn more about the story to history of the Russell, the artist himself, and about some of the amazing exhibitions. With us today is Brenda Cornick, the Collections and Exhibition Director here at the C.M. Russell Museum, along with Dwayne Broughton, who is the Art and Philanthropy Director at the museum. Thank you both for taking time today to join us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's such a historical place, and uh, Brenda, talk about how, how it all began, uh, the C.M. Russell Museum. It's been around for, for as long as most of us can remember, but uh, take us back to the, to the origins of this place. Well, the museum was established in 1953, and it was really through the very thoughtful and generous donation of Josephine Trigg. Josephine was a very dear friend of Charlie and Nancy Russell. Her parents were Albert and Margaret Trigg, and they lived right next door um, to the Russells, and their home was actually very close to where the original and first Russell Gallery was built. And Josephine, she had passed away in 1951, but prior to her passing away, she had planned that she would leave her collection here in Great Falls if there was an organization that could be established to care for her collection. And so the community of Great Falls and the friends of Russell, of Russell's work, and the many people that um, really had had worked very hard to ensure that a group was established, which was the Trigg Foundation, and they raised enough money, just under $60,000, to build a gallery to house the just over 150 works that Josephine had collected. And it's such an important collection to our museum and to the history of Russell because it was really that personal side of Charlie Russell. They were very close friends um, to Russell and to Nancy, and so the collection really highlights that friendship and how and why Josephine Trigg felt it was so important that this collection was preserved for future generations. So in 1953, the first gallery was built and established, and then after that, the museum had been had been built um, built on over the years. But in 1953. 53, that was really our core. And then another part of that that I think is important to our history is the Trig, is the, um, the gallery addition to the Russell Studio. So in 1927, Nancy Russell had started building a gallery addition onto Charlie Russell's original log studio. And the purpose of that was to be able to memorialize Charlie and his work. And that was finished in 1930 as the Russell Memorial. And we like to consider that as really the beginning of our history here because we still have that original studio and original gallery on our grounds today. This place is, is much more than just, just an art gallery. Talk about the, the mission of the uh, CM Russell Museum. The mission of the Russell Museum is actually quite simple in and of itself. It's to collect, conserve, interpret, and share the, the message and artwork of Charles M. Russell, the, his life and his artwork, and also his contemporaries, and as well as contemporary art museums that are still practicing today. We hear the term C.M. Russell Museum, but as you drive through town and you come closer to this, it's uh, called the C.M. Russell Museum Complex, so it's, it's more than just one, one building, and, and it's a pretty big building, too. Talk about everything that uh, is, is encapsulated here in this, in this facility. The home and studio, the, the Russell home was built in 1900, and then in 1903, the log studio was built. And at that point, it was just the one room, Charlie Russell's original studio, and then that ad, the gallery edition was, was finished in 1930. Those two buildings are, are national um, historic sites and we're very proud of that and, and that is a very big part of our entire story here at the Russell Museum, given that that is the place that the Russells lived and that Charlie did the majority of his actual painting was in his studio and then here inside 
the galleries, we have 16 different galleries, not all Russell galleries, but most of those have Russell works in them, and so we do have quite a large facility that also has a wonderful discovery gallery for our education classes, particularly those youth classes, and then we have a little bit of event space. Um, outside, too, we have a, a very nice sculpture garden that we are continuing to build on so that we can have some really nice programming and events outside, but then also so that the public can just come to the museum and be on the grounds and enjoy the environment. Um, so it is more than, than an art gallery where you can come and enjoy the, the exhibits that we have. We like to also think, it, think of it as a community space and an education facility as well. What uh, is the annual budget of the, uh, the museum and, and how is money raised for the museum? Uh, the museum has currently about a $2.5 million dollar annual budget. Uh, those funds come in so many different ways. We, of course, rely heavily on our annual fundraising auction that a lot of folks know a lot about, the Russell, uh, uh, an exhibition and an event to benefit the CM Russell Museum. That happens each March, and right around Charlie's birthday, we celebrate him and have some fun in the, in the process. But, um, funds to cover our budget each year come, as I mentioned, from other sources as well, like corporate sponsorships are, are very important to us, foundational grants, um, and then things like membership and attendance, of course, plays into uh, the bottom line. And, uh, and then we, we do put out calls to our support base each year as well. And so it takes a lot of... A, a lot of friends of, of Charlie Russell and the museum to keep the lights on and the doors open. I know, Dwayne, the last time we talked to you, it was uh, just before the, uh, the uh, 2018 Russell auction. Uh, tell me how, how things went uh, this, this year, this past uh, Russell auction. Folks flocked to town yet again. We did have a few snowflakes that weekend, if I recall, but, but it didn't keep the, the people from coming to town and, as I mentioned, celebrating Charlie. Uh, we had uh, all the collectors were in their seats right where we want them and the bid paddles were active. So we did sell about some total, about $5.2 million worth of artwork was sold. That of course is the gross sales, most of which goes back to the artists and consigners um, each year. Uh, it's important to note, I point out every time I have the opportunity, that the Russell Museum absolutely does not sell works out of our collections during those March events. All the work that comes up on the auction stage comes either directly from the artists themselves or consigners that have um, bought and are now selling those works. Um, so the museum retains only a small fraction of, of, of all those, those hammer prices. The, uh, so the event as a whole was absolutely a success. And, and as, I, as I tell everyone that, that has time to listen, it, it truly is a year-long process to get ready. And we, uh, we're actually right in the heart of collecting the artwork that we'll, we'll put back up on the stage for 2019. Well, in the, the uh, current CM Russell Museum, how many, how many works by uh, Charlie Russell are on uh, display here? So we currently have 170 Russell works on view to the public. We have, in the collection altogether, we have several hundred Russells. Most of them are in storage. Um, that's because the majority of our collection are works on paper by Russell, and those do have to be rotated due to not being, they shouldn't be expo exposed to light um, for longer periods of time. So we're fortunate to have a pretty deep collection of works on paper, and we, we rotate them regularly. Our master works by Russell are typically always on display. They are now, so it's always, if you come to the museum, you can pretty much always bet that you can see the best that we have of Russell. At least um, the majority of those works are out. And then we do have many Russell works that are like unframed sketches and drawings that we are in the process of going through and doing some research on and cataloging. Our archivist on, on staff, Catherine Kramer, she is, is very busy trying to develop a plan to, di to digitize our collection which is very important um, to have that collection available to the public so that they can access it online in the future and then have um, plans to have a conservator maybe take a look at a lot of those works on paper and 
develop a proposal for treatment possibly and maybe get some of those framed so that we can share that deeper collection with our visitors, particularly those works on paper. We mentioned education too. You have a lot of education programs, especially for young people that can, can come in here and learn about Western art and about Charlie Russell in, in particular. We do. We have a lot of really great educational programs for youth. We currently have our summer um, camps for, for, for youth, and those range from really all ages, from preschool up until, really up, in, up until all ages of, of, primarily through sixth grade is the core, a little bit through middle school, but we have those, those camps all summer, and then we begin a, another series of camps in the fall, and we offer the same, the same opportunities for kids to come in and take a variety of different art classes, and they tour the museum and have a very, a very developed um, lesson plan for each class, and we enjoy that time because it's very busy and active in the, in the, in the building when we have the students go through. And we also have, um, as part of our Russell Sale exhibition every year, we also have all of the fifth graders in Great Falls in the city and the county come in and they take, it's the fifth grade essay contest, we call it. And this year, this next, this next sale, um, so in January, the students will start their tours and then the essays are gone through and, and we um, have a committee that, that evaluates them and picks the winners from each school. And then at the beginning of, um, I believe it's the beginning that first week in March, we typically have the ceremony where we announce the winners and it'll be the 50th anniversary of, or the 50th year that we'll be celebrating that this coming auction. And we're very excited because then we display those winning essays in the museum and they're up for the majority of um, the rest of the year. We typically don't take those down until about April or May when we're getting ready for our summer exhibition. But that's a very exciting time to have all of those fifth graders in looking and learning about Russell artwork and his life and his, his, and his artwork and history of, of the museum. And um, it's just a very energetic time for the museum. Okay. Uh, speaking of exhibitions, the summer exhibition, we're like right in the heart of it right now doing this uh, interview. It's the uh, uh, Charles M. Russell, The Women in His Life and Art. Uh, tell me about, uh, about this exhibition. So Charles M. Russell, The Women in His Life and Art is a an important exhibition, not only to the C.M. Russell Museum, but in for the, for the scholarship of Russell's artwork in general. Uh, the subject matter of women in Russell's life and art has not been uh, researched or really, it hasn't been exhibited before. There hasn't been anything like this done. And it was important for us to really take the lead on this. Um, as the Russell Museum, we've partnered with Joan um, Carpenter Tricoli is one of the curators for the exhibition. She's from Denver, and she is a Russell scholar and expert. And then our own curator, Emily Wilson, also curated the exhibition. And together, they, they got together about 60 Russell works that they felt were great examples of the real role that women played in shaping Russell's career as an artist, but also his life. And Traditionally, for Russell's West and images of Russell West, Russell's West, people think of the very kind of active, um, male-dominated images of buffalo hunts and the predicament scenes of hunting. But 300 works in total, from oil paintings, watercolors, and sculptures, have women as the center focus and. Um, it's just been wonderful to see the reaction of visitors as they come through and they, they really gain a sense of how powerful and how, how strong that influence, that female influence was for Charlie and how he evolved as an artist because of that. And to have special works here on loan that we wouldn't normally have without an exhibition like this, we've received loans from the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, and some private collectors that, that we wouldn't have here otherwise and may not have here for quite some time. So it's a great time for the public to come in and see a special exhibition focusing on an area that 
is really new to the Russell world and I think will we'll really have a, a very, very far reach um, through the years. And another great part of this exhibition is we also completed a publication, which is all of the works. Um, there are images of all of the works in the exhibition and some wonderful essays. Both um, Emily Wilson and Joan Carpenter Tricoli contributed essays, as well as Jennifer Bottomley Looney, who is the curator at the Montana Historical Society and then Thomas A. Petrie, who is a Russell, a Russell expert and the chairman of our board, had also contributed an essay. So we have that side of it too. So doing publications along with a, an exhibition like this is something that we haven't done a lot of, but we, we hope to do many more of those types of exhibitions. So it's been a lot of fun for us. We have some, a couple, very unique kind of hands-on opportunities in this exhi exhibition from an educational standpoint where visitors can really interact with the, the artworks in terms of we ask them questions about what was their favorite female in that, that was highlighted in the exhibition. We have some, some areas where you can, you can lift up a little, a little preview and see the answer to maybe a question. We're really asking people to to, to think about what it is that, that this type of exhibition, what kind of, what kind of questions does it raise for them, and, and maybe what do they want to see more of, or what would they have liked to have seen that wasn't displayed. So it's been, it's been a great summer, and we have this up through the end of September. September 30th is the last day, and then it travels to Scottsdale. Um, Western Spirit, Scottsdale's Museum of the, of the West will exhibit it as well, and that's another part of this that is important to us as we haven't traveled exhibitions a great deal, and this was an opportunity that we felt was, it was important to try and do this so that other parts of the country could, could enjoy such, such an important um, exhibition of, of Russell. All right, so people need to, uh, at least in the Great Falls area in Montana, get out here before September 30th. Yes, and, and, and purchase a catalog in our museum store. It's a, it's a beautiful catalog, and it's, it's a way to kind of capture um, what we've done here and then continue to learn more with those really great essays, and the images in the catalog are, are so bright and powerful, and it's, it's, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm working on my second time through it, and I've learned more, more each time I've, I've, I've read another one of the essays, so it's, it's pretty great. Obviously, one of the women in Charlie's life that was so influential was his wife, Nancy Russell. And Dwayne, why do you, why do you think she's so important in the, in the life of Charlie Russell? Boy, there, there's an understatement there, Tim, <laughs> that um, it's, it's well established that we wouldn't be sitting here today if it weren't for Nancy Russell coming into Charlie's life at just the right moment of his career and his, his growth as an artist. Uh, uh, Charlie was so fortunate to uh, cross paths with Nancy Russell, and she really is the one that got him to focus on, on his artwork and, and take the life of an artist, um, make it the priority that we're all reaping the benefits of now. Um, Charlie and Nancy were married down the interstate in, in Cascade, Montana, and, and Nancy knew if, if Charlie was going to be anybody, they had to move up to the big city of Great Falls. And, and really get his name out there. And, and uh, boy, she also said, if we're, if we're gonna go to Great Falls, we need to be surrounded by all the right people, like, like the Trigg family right here on this block. So I, I think I read somewhere that she, she had said, anyone who was anyone lived right here on Fourth Avenue North. So that's why uh, they, they moved in right here to this block. And that's why this institution is right in this residential area. And we're so thrilled. Um, for that to be the, the reality. Um, so yeah, Nancy Russell very much um, is a big part of, of Charlie Russell's story. All right, I know another exhibition, it's a, a permanent exhibition, is the, uh, the bison, dedicated to the bison. Talk, talk a little bit about that, what people will see when they come and see that one. So um, our bison exhibition, it's the um, heart of the Northern Plains Indian culture and that exhibition originally opened in December 2008, and then last September we reinstalled it with a new look. We brought out new um, artifacts that we had recently conserved and just 
took a little bit of a, I guess, a fresh interpretation on it. We've added larger um, images. We have a couple screens, digital screens in the exhibition where we have um, uh, bison ranchers today talking about uh, the bison and, and how important it is to to maintain that that bison number and and to really utilize um, the land and, and the hard work that they're doing and continuing that real respect for the bison as as a contemporary um, as we do today and the other part of the bison exhibition that is definitely new for us is that we have one one of our galleries it's it's made up of three galleries we have a lot of um, artifacts and artwork in the exhibition but we're telling more stories and so we're continuing to reach out and talk to um, a lot of the American Indian uh, people today in the Northern Plains and getting their stories and feedback so that we can add in the third gallery a little bit more of, of that and why it's relevant for us today to have such a really significant exhibition um, that we have and why it was so important to Charlie Russell to document this way of life. Why is that important to us today? That's, that's really the message that we're trying to get through with this uh, reinterpretation of the Bison exhibition. For people that want to come visit the Russell, what, what are the hours? I know there's summer hours, there's winter hours, but uh, we're obviously in summer right now. What are the hours and when is the museum open? The museum's open uh, from 10 to 5. Uh, Tuesday through Sunday, so those are our summer hours, and and uh, I'm happy to report that the the folks are coming during those hours. We've uh, had a, a nice spike in attendance uh, this summer, due to, in large part to the really uh, stunning exhibitions we have on the wall, but also maybe part of it is in in reaction to the recent documentary that Montana PBS did put together, um, that really increased the exposure of Charlie to uh, maybe new audiences. Those of us who have, have been studying the Russell story for a long time also learned a thing or two, but it's, it's really helped raise the exposure of Charlie. And I think some of those uh, cars in state and out of state, out in the parking lot are a, a reaction of, of that exposure. Yeah, talk a little bit about the documentary, if you could. What, uh, for those of us who haven't seen it, maybe, uh, what, what uh, can we expect to see with that? The documentary that, again, Montana PBS um, put together about Russell was a long time coming, in my, in my opinion. It was a, a very focused effort to share the, the story of, of Charlie with the world. Uh, a lot of folks know Charlie Russell only as the, as the, the cowboy and Indian images they saw in, in reproductions and calendars and books throughout, uh, throughout time. But, but uh, boy, Russell is so much more, and that's what the documentary is so great about uh, unfolding the, the different layers of, of the man behind those, those masterpieces. Uh, it, was a, it was a very, uh, uh, as I mentioned, a long time coming, and, and when I first heard about the, the production and how it was going to take uh, several years to produce, I, I wanted instant gratification. I wanted to see it right then and there, and, and uh, the results are... Um, so stunning, and it really tells the story of Charlie. So, um, it, to know Charlie is to love him. So, I think I think that helps us spread the word. All right, you guys are both here every day, and I wanted to ask you both. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Dwayne. What is what is your favorite part of this museum? Oh boy, that's a great. That's a great question, and I have kind of a funny answer to that. Um, to that story. Of, of course, the, the walls are lined with, with a lot of favorite parts, but there's one, one little piece that might come as a twist uh, in answer to that question, but there's a, there's a small hole in the door of, the, of Charlie's original studio out there that, uh, that is where um, Charlie would stick a string up and through this hole in the door and that was the latch string that you could actually open the door from the outside. And one of the things Charlie always said was um, to his friends was that the latch string is always out for you. So when that latch string is out, he was accepting company. And uh, Charlie, a big part of his life was just um, his, the friendships he had made and, 
and developed over the years. Uh, the reason that's an important part to me is it really brings the reality, and I can feel Charlie here on the campus, and I look at that hole in the wall, and Charlie's still welcoming us all here today. All right. And Brenda, how about you? What, uh, what stands out for you? What stands out for me um, is probably being able to see the process of preserving art and why it is so important for us to do this. We have, we have been conserving both the home and studio, the buildings over the last couple years. We're going to be reopening both of those with um, reinterpretation and uh, fresh exhibitions this coming March. And being able to go through that process from the very beginning, talking with the historic architects and Russell historians, and we've had some focus groups with people from various backgrounds giving us some feedback. It's, it's been really interesting to go through that and be working with the artifacts and the artwork and, and to now be at a point where we're, we're getting close to be able to reinstall those two places for the public to see and hopefully many, many people can come in and see Russell for the first time in, in um, their own way and then for people who have been here for years they can see Russell and Nancy Russell in a fresh light and for me that's the most interesting part and just being a very positive environment surrounded by artwork is is a pretty pretty good part as well so I can't complain. All right. How does this museum stack up to other Western art museums? The fact that we are a single artist museum is the biggest difference and we're very fortunate for that in, in, in so many aspects because you can truly dive into an artist and having as many galleries as we have to do that and to bring in other artists that were Russell's contemporaries and then also bring in um, artists of today to really highlight um, again that single artist and, and show how Charlie Russell really is that cowboy artist and he really is that person that is um, still today showing us this, uh, this way of the American West that I think today we, we, we still value and hold so closely to us and, and he helps us do that. And so I think that's probably the biggest difference between us and some of these other great Western art museums. But then we've also been part of the, um, the Museums West Consortium, which is a, uh, a number of Western art museums that we can partner with and collaborate with on different projects is another huge benefit that we have um, where we are today to be able to be working with you know, museums in Texas and, and all over um, in Colorado and, and throughout the West really where we can uh, work together to establish, again, still maintain this spirit of the West that I think we all have in common and um, we can work together to try and achieve that. All right, Brenda Cornick, Collections and Exhibition Director of the C.M. Russell Museum, and Dwayne Broughton, the Art and Philanthropy Director. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. For Western art lovers, history buffs, and just about anyone visiting North Central Montana, the C.M. Russell Museum is a must-see place to visit. Thanks for joining us this week for Face the State. You've been watching Face the State, a presentation of MTN, the Montana Television Network.